Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, taking a look at what has been going on most recently and what we think is likely to happen next. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, guys, check it out. Linked in the description down below. It's a fantastic community talk in crypto 24 7 it's completely free and is the first place that we go to to notify you of the ins and the outs of everything that is going on in the crypto space so why not check it out i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find down there now in this video i am going to be applying elliott wave theory it is uh, sometimes seeming a little bit overly complicated uh, it's really important that i think you do understand what the the basics of elliott wave theory are and you can follow along these videos a little bit more clearly but also gives you a big understanding of the market structure and all that kind of wonderful stuff now in the discord server there is a pdf it's 181 pages long. It explains everything that you need to know about Elliott Wave Theory. You'll find that in the general chat area. If a PDF of that kind of size is a little bit daunting to you guys, I have created an Elliott Wave Theory course, also linked in the description down below. Um, this is a 21-part video course. It helps kind of break down all the various different structures and helps you kind of figure out what to look for, how to draw it, and how to trade it if you wanted to. Um, though we are running a 50% discount on that, so you can check that out in the description below if that sounds of interest to you as well. Okay, let's make a start with this though, right? So Bitcoin paired up with USDT on the hourly chart and Binance is the data source. Now, following on from what we were talking about yesterday and what we spoke about on the Twitch stream this morning, we did hit our high point just up here. We did overextend ever so slightly, but this yellow box area that we drew on yesterday was based on a low somewhere around here. And we actually dropped down into our demand area before we rallied on up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and draw in these more accurate readings. And you can see right in here that this yellow box area that I had scoped out at 16,951 should have actually have been a low of 16,960. 61 rather than 51 up to a high of 17,014. Now my high I scoped out yesterday was around the 16,976 of which we barely but we did but we barely kind of just broke above this box and then we broke on down. So um, yeah everything looked like this was a perfect way five nothing unusual nothing kind of out of the ordinary with it kind of hit the targets and we can move on. Now on the way down here there's a couple of things that are actually probably worth pointing out. Uh, we've completed five waves up. This is known, a five wave trend like this, or a five wave move like this is known as a trend. Okay, this is a mini trend because we're only on the hourly chart here, right? So it's nothing to get too kind of excited about. Um, but it is a five wave structure. This basically means that we are likely to see uh, this structure end with five waves okay and there's a couple of different ways that that can happen you can have a five three five three five structure which is a trend on a slightly larger time frame or we can have a look at it as a zigzag pattern which is a five three five okay so a five three five would be my minimum expectation at this particular point in time where we can then start seeing uh, a move up towards our higher supply areas okay so i'm going to go ahead and delete this one just here okay and it's not really important to us anymore and we can see that we consolidated here we tried to break above this supply area we Closed and then we got dragged back down again all of this was happening on the back of the FOMC meeting that we saw and spoke about yesterday as well so this looks like we have to come down we've come down into this new local low just here okay so the minimum expectation on this has already been met and um, we don't have to go down any further but you know I would estimate that we probably do um, but do expect us to kind of you know slowly grind our way down there I don't think we're necessarily going to see something um, you know fast and, and basically just go straight there or whatever I think we could end up with a bit more of a, a slower sideways trading uh, piece here many altcoins are looking for an extension to the upside they're still looking for a little bit of personal growth uh, in them so in that I think we're going to see Bitcoin kind of stagger a little little bit uh, and probably bounce around between some of these key areas these demand areas and supply areas we're probably going to find ourselves kind of consolidating down a little bit um, but essentially what I'm looking for here is a three-wave structure okay now we've kind of met the minimum expectation but I would expect this to come down deeper and there's two places uh, of interest to me right so if we do lose this area of demand here right this yellow box if we lose this area and we were to come down lower then my expectations are that we kind of come down into this lower demand area here okay and uh, you can see that we kind of consolidate in between these basically there's sellers at the higher end and buyers at the lower end likewise up here there's sellers at the top and buyers at the bottom and you kind of find yourselves kind of getting stuck into these kind of ranging markets now if we do come down here my expectation is that we hit this demand 
ground area and then we launch up in five more waves taking us up higher into the supply area there okay my expectation would be that a minimum of a five wave move like this one two three four and five like so okay however there is this big area up here i do think is still something that we should be thinking about um it's going to take some time but you know there's a couple of ways that that could happen so the first thing i want to do is uh, reflect on what kind of fibonacci levels we're talking about here okay uh, so if i go ahead and draw this um actually from the bottom to the top because that would make more sense considering we're talking about downward plays here and um, the 88.2 percent retracement 88.2 percent retracement comes in at sixteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars okay this is right in here now the importance of this level this is a typical wave two area okay so if we were to come down and we were to come down towards our demand area here i would not expect us to go down lower than the sixteen thousand six hundred and fifty as labeled right here okay but i would expect us to kind of be hovering in this area around the 16,650 um, and in doing so we meet the requirements of a wave two on the deeper side as well which will make it a lot easier for us to then go ahead and start thinking about a move to the upside there's no guarantee that we move down here because the minimum expectation has already been met and their maximum expectation would be i say maximum but yeah maximum expectation is probably going to come right down onto a double bottom uh, right around this area of 1.236 which would be sixteen thousand six hundred and thirteen dollars right uh, on the one-to-one -one basis would be about sixteen thousand six hundred and sixty three and um, so you can see that we've come right down into this lower range okay now getting there on the other hand could be a little bit complicated because it looks like we're coming down here we've probably done something like this we probably then need to move up a little ways and then we probably need to move down again okay so i'd expect it to kind of be a bit choppy for bitcoin um, and during this kind of move to the upside which you can kind of see playing out right now uh, we might see you know uh, many altcoins get a bit more traction behind them than just bitcoin okay um, so i'm going to leave it open-ended i think we're going to be bouncing around here for a little while I'm not expecting us to uh, to kind of see dramatic uh, movements to the upside straight away. Okay, now it's possible that we do because I said we have already met the minimum expectation to the downside. And considering a lot of people were um, going long, it doesn't surprise me that Bitcoin came down here and grabbed that liquidity. If we throw in the HTF uh, liquidity finder, you can see that there's a lot of liquidity down lower, but now there's a lot of liquidity right up here as well as people were starting to short the market as they started to see that reversal. So we can come up and we can grab that liquidity once that liquidity is grabbed there there might be some more liquidity down here and so forth and the market will just bounce around picking up as much of that liquidity as they possibly can so essentially you're here i do think we're going to be ranging in this little range here uh, for a little while i don't think it's going to be anything too impressive um and then we can start to once liquidity kind of stacks up in the right areas move towards our higher end targets for btc now as i kind of scale this down we can kind of start to get an idea of the scope of the situation okay we are talking about this being a c wave movement of an a b and c structure here okay and now this structure could be something significantly uh, more powerful um, and that would be under a five wave structure where we have three here going up three coming down and then we end up with that five wave structure a wave two situation a wave three situation a wave four and then a wave five coming right up into our higher end range here as well okay now that's pure speculation at this point um, all based on how much we've retraced at the moment so it's not a guarantee by any stretch of the imagination but i do think that as a c wave structure here coming up towards our 17,274 to 17,447. I've been speaking about this one for quite some time. It's an area that we haven't revisited. So it's an area that I do think we're going to have to kind of revisit at some point. This here is a B wave movement. Okay, so although it completes this A, B, C structure, all of that is nested inside our B wave, which then takes us down in towards our low A wave structure, which would put us right into, um, let me actually put that back, whereas I don't want to move it. I just want to expand it um, it would be this low range here in the fifteen and a half thousand dollar area okay so once we do that then we would have a potential b wave movement upwards and then come down into the new lower lows around the thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars all of this is nested inside as much bigger structure as you can kind of see coming in here and yeah we are kind of you know moving quite nicely towards it but it takes time these things are not usually quick uh, from time to time there's a there's a push that kind of you know um or a catalyst that kind of pushes everything over the edge but for the most part everything here is kind of following good structure at the moment so i'm not too concerned we can kind of see a bit of a move to the upside slightly longer term uh, than the kind of immediate kind of movements but 
consolidation is kind of a main factor here um, and at some point we are going to be breaking down and then you know we're going to see a bit of another bear market rally before crashing even down further so kind of keep this in mind i do not think the bottom is in for btc yet or many of these other altcoins and i do think there's going to be a lot more bleeding to come now obviously as we talk about a lot we like to look at the wallets for bitcoin holders and one of the fundamental basics of all cryptocurrency, no matter what it is, is that there's going to be a buyer and there's going to be a seller. And we need to marry up buyers and sellers, right? And it's important that we understand, you know, who is buying and who is selling to help us understand whether or not uh, this is a time in the market that I want to get excited about or a time in the market that I don't want to get too caught up in because I might get trapped in some positions that I don't want to hold for a significant period of time. And the wallet counts help us understand this, right? Here we have the retail wallet everything from 0.1% or more or through to 10 Bitcoin or more. Okay, three different wallet sizes, but all retail investors with different levels of investment, and they all act emotionally when it comes to the price action of BTC. And as you can kind of see, all of these graphs with the black lines are going up as the orange lines are going down. So Bitcoin's price goes down and the retail money comes flooding in here to buy up all that cheap Bitcoin. But the question that you are not necessarily asking right now and question that I think we all should be asking is a simple one. If these guys are buying, then who is selling? Because there's a buyer and there's a seller. And that's where the larger whales and kind of the institutional players really come into account. This is where we take a look and say, okay, well, if there are people that are selling, who is it? And if they've got retail buying, who is it that's selling it to them? And here we can see we've got sharks at 100 Bitcoin or more. We've got the whales at 1000 Bitcoin or more. And we've got the kraken at 10,000 Bitcoin or more. For the most part, if we actually take a look at the last 365 days for the whales, we can see exactly who has been selling their Bitcoin to the retail investors. So the question that I ask, and I ask it all the time, is a simple one. Do you believe that the whales are selling the bottom? If you believe the bottom is in and the whales are selling, then you believe that the whales are selling the bottom and they're making a catastrophic mistake because the bottom is already in. Alternatively, if you believe that the whales are not stupid enough to be selling the bottom, then well, the bottom cannot simply be in. They haven't purchased yet. So they aren't going to be buying until there's going to sell her, and that seller is unfortunately going to end up being the retail investor. As we saw in 20, um, 2018, we saw retail money coming in here because they believed this was the bottom. They thought this was the bottom. They thought this was the bottom. And by this flat period here, they'd had enough and they started to sell out. After all that accumulation, they start to sell their positions and they sell and they sell and they sell, right? And that's this this particular point in time that's really important because this is where the Bitcoin whales really started to accumulate their positions. They were buying the Bitcoin from the retail investor. But we can go further back, take a look at 2017. Here is the pump to the upside. They weren't trying to sell the top there. They were selling into the pump. Okay. And what was happening during that particular moment in time, if you take a look at the retail investors, the retail investors were buying from the whale investors during that entire FOMO area. And then of course they believe the bottom is in and so forth, right? So if we go and take a look at the whales, what do you see? You see them selling their Bitcoin to the retail investor, and then they're buying the same Bitcoin back at a cheaper price later okay so it's all about who is buying and who is selling understanding supply and demand is absolutely critical if you want to get really successful in this space at least in my opinion do bear in mind i'm not a financial advisor i cannot give you financial advice all i can do is give you my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as i see it not only in the charts but also on chain metrics as well if this is the kind of stuff that you want to stay informed with make sure you subscribe if you found this useful hit the like button join us down in discord and guys until the next one have a fantastic day